Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, Ultimate Warrior, or just Warrior. Welcome in to Bros, Foes, and Heroes. I am Zach, joined as always by my co-host Mike. Hello. And Mike, today's episode of our comics podcast, or Mm -hmm. comic book podcast, is related to a comic book, but the character is not a comic character. Right. It's a, uh, how will I put this? It is a creation of in a different universe. Yes. That has been, you know, used. I'm trying to make it sound cooler than it is. It's a wrestler. Right. Um, not to say that wrestling isn't cool because I absolutely love wrestling. Right, right. Uh, but it is Mr. Jim Helwig, also known as <laughs> the Ultimate Warrior, or should I say, I'm sorry, his name was actually Warrior. He changed his mm. name legally to Warrior mm. in the 90s. So Their real names are always so disappointing, aren't they? Um, Jim Helwig. Sometimes. Well, like, I mean, but they're all playing, at least especially at this time in the 80s, larger than life characters, what yeah, they come up with. Sure, today. sure. Like, it, nobody names their kid. Like, when he was in uh, World Class in Dallas, they mm-hmm. called him Dingo Warrior. Like, Dingo nobody Warrior, names really? their kid Dingo Warrior. Uh, maybe. Nowadays, you never yeah, know. But, sure. my, I mean, my point is, like, it's always going to be a little less cool than. Yeah. But. I had, I, when I was teaching, I had kids named after Jello flavors. Really? Uh huh. And then one named after a gas station. What's the gas station one? It's got two X's in it. Okay. That one. Gotcha. The one that makes birds dirty. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, what I wanted to present, though, before we got into. I don't mean to minimize that. I just want to say I just, that was just a joke. No, that's fine. They make dirt, birds dirty. Just laugh at the where our planet's at, Mike. <laughs> sure. So we're going to take away before I cry about our current uh, ec- ecological situation. And we're going to focus on. Sure. The ecological. I don't Ichthyological. know. Ecological. What is uh, the environment? Eco- ecological. Yeah. Ecological. Yeah, 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 okay. You got it. Yeah. Um, I guess a little bit I should explain for people not familiar. I like how you trust with me the wrestling. That. I could have said anything. I know you could have. Uh, and I would have believed you, mm-hmm, though. Mm-hmm. That I'd give you way too much trust. Yeah, yeah, most people do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Jim Helwig was a man. Just to briefly kind of describe his career as a wrestler. Yeah. Before we get into everything, as always the fascinated comic book. by these. By the way, their their background, how they got there, the time they put in, all that stuff. It's, yeah. Uh, so I think you and I last week we talked about mankind. Yes. A- after the show, we oh, talked yes. about and mankind. I love Mick yeah. Foley. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely adore Mick wrestlers. Foley. Wrestler. He's he's that kind of guy. You know, um, even though I did hear something, no, nope, never mind. I'm that's a super yeah, please don't wrestling nerdy thing yeah, to say yeah. that I would go off on a tangent for sure. that. It's for a different right. podcast with somebody who, who would uh, like to hear my stories about wrestling. <laughs> so I can't. Uh, Jim Tune Helwig, in next though, week for wrestling stories. <laughs> uh, wrestling. Jim Helwig, though, yeah. is he basically uh, he learns to become a chiropractor. I can I can tell you. Wait, what? He, he is a chiro- at the beginning. I guess we, let me back. We've up. already taken a how turn much, here. How much? How much info do you want about his backstory? I, I would love all of it. Yeah, okay. give me all of it from here's, the tassely boots all the way up. Here's what I know in like a TLDR. Okay. Too long didn't read. Yep. Synopsis of Ultimate. Warrior. If you say too long didn't read, aren't you like I just okay, did right. it? But okay. I, to be honest, and this is going to sound, I didn't know if you SMH. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Maybe some of our listeners didn't get it, though. And so yeah, I was explaining sure, it to them. Sure, now they sure. know. Yeah. Uh, Jim Helwig, uh, I know that um, something that bothers him early on in life is that his father leaves their family when he's like 11 or 12. Oh, that is a bummer. And it does bother him. Yeah, I also sure. know that he, uh, according to his first wife, always had really bad bouts of anxiety that he always had to deal with. For some reason, I thought you were going to say body odor. <laughs> 
Don't know about that. But he was always a really skinny kid. Yeah. Oh, really? And then he started working out in high school. Okay. And just fell in love with like, he was able to like turn into something. Like yeah, what yeah, he was yeah. able to transform into. Well, he was able to turn into yeah. the ultimate so warrior. He or was, dingo warrior. Well, if you're, yeah. If you were in on the ground he floor. He was a Blade Runner rock at one point Bla- in time. Wait, 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 what the who? Or, yeah, Blade Runner. <laughs> Blade Runner. They, they, they were the Blade Runners and it was rock and sting. And yes, it was that sting because they both broke in at the same time. He and I can was explain rock? that too. His, he was rock. Not the rock. Not the rock, just rock. It he was did like, not smell what you were cooking. No, yeah. that's a lot later. Okay. But sure. um, so he became obsessed with like, you know, working out and he became a bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. Like he ended up winning like a Mr. Georgia or whatever, like in the mid 80s, like okay. a bodybuilder. Yeah, 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 sure. And he wanted to learn or he learned to be, went to school to become a chiropractor to just learn more, I guess, about <laughs> the body and stuff. Don't know why I picked chiropractic. Okay, sure. But still. Well, that well, was the one fulfilling. that Sally Field was on TV about, you know, TV, VCR, chiropractic, uh, uh, elder law, you oh, know, those that, kind of things. Sure. I completely <laughs> forgot about those commercials. <laughs> I was lost at first. Mm-hmm. And then I remember those would randomly pop up on yeah. like Cartoon Network. Like, oh, yeah. Sometimes they would have random like infomercials like that. No, pop it wasn't up Sally Field. I think for, I said Sally Field. But you it, did, it but wasn't. I know the it one was, we were, it was. Um, what's her name from, uh, from I was going to say Good Times, but that's wrong too. It's from All in the Family. It's uh, the lady that cared about the kids. Was it Edith? Starving. No, the blonde one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Meathead's is. wife. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Meathead. Yeah, Mrs. Meathead. <laughs> I love how sometimes I'm good with names and other times I'm just completely yeah. awful. Yeah. But so. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Meathead. After uh, he's not, it seems like he's not fulfilled Sally by those Struthers. Careers. Sally Struthers. Thank there you. you go. Uh, that he's not fulfilled by the chiropractic <laughs> work. Uh he goes and wait. What? He's not fulfilled. It's not. Yeah. Come it's on. not what he wanted. Uh, I think his uh, in cracking backs, brother. They recently there's a show on uh, Vice called uh, Dark Side of the Ring that has a lot of great stories that they did oh. uh, an episode on him that kind of there's stuff it skips over that's absolutely ridiculous that happens too. But it's a nice little forty five minute watch. I will say I love Vice for their stuff. They're, they have they're, a lot of great they're, stuff. They're, they're way too into weed. But yeah. other than that, boy, their their journalistic stuff is it's really fantastic. Good. And yeah. all the show, the dark side of the ring, it like spawned. Now they have like a dark side of football, dark oh, side really? of the nineties. Oh, oh. But it started with the wrestling series, and it is really good. Guess what I'm if, watching, especially if like you know you don't know a lot because yeah. like it's a lot of these you know wrestling stories that at least people have always been into it, kind of like you know know about. But it's sure. like a deeper dive. Yeah. So for some who know, then it's more info. Mm-hmm. Or for those who've known for all time, it's like, oh, this is a nice, you know, collection. And for the people who don't, then it's a cool little intro to it. But um, so for those who know, it's more info. There you go. Sure. Uh, it's a tagline for it's our great. show. I love it. Now, now you know. Yeah. I feel like I can't stop rhyming. <laughs> Shooting star. <laughs> so um, he meets. Uh, they end up moving out to California. Okay. And while he's out there, he meets a man by the name of Steve Borden. Okay. Again, you want to talk about names. Steve yeah. Borden is also known uh, by his wrestling name of Sting. Okay. All right. Right? You remember yeah. Sting? Oh, yeah. So both of them decide. Sting, All the versions of Sting. Sting yes. basically gives him the idea like, hey, I think we could like get in as wrestlers. Yeah, like, sure. I think we're both big. Like Ultimate Warrior is always jacked. Mm-hmm. I think we could, you know. Uh, get into wrestling. Uh, and so they send their tapes about somewhere and they end up getting picked up and they go through some different territories. Again, I'm not breaking down everything. Yeah, I got go, it. Sure, but sure. They, uh, they go through and then eventually there's some hostility between the two of them. That's just, they're no, not getting, come on. yeah, they're not getting along. Um, and it breaks off and he kind of goes solo, eventually winds up in the WWE, WWF at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, in the late 80s, early 90s, which was his big run. There's a big three, like two, three-year window, yeah. and maybe even longer there. Yeah. His time in the WWF, the first run, is when he came to stardom. Um, and that is... This is like WrestleMania 3, 4, five, kind yeah, of thing. Six, yeah. Okay, WrestleMania 6 is okay. what everybody gotcha. would remember if they knew. But it's a big match, and it's the first time that something happened basically in the WWF and it's ultimate warrior wrestled Hulk Hogan. And it was the Mm. first time uh, in a long time Mm. that Hulk Hogan, not only lost clean on TV, he's no longer the champion. This was a big moment for Vince had basically, they had um, spent so many years, which Hulk Hogan is a ridiculous individual as well. Right. Um, 
but he had spent so many years as like the mainstay for them that he was tired, kind of wanted to take a break. Sure. So Vince McMahon, the owner operator mm -hmm. runner of uh, WWF decided that the ultimate warrior was going to be that guy going forward. Mm -hmm. And then it didn't work out to the same level it did with Hulk. Right. Eventually things kind of fell off. Hulk ended up coming back. Ultimate Warrior was a big deal. Ultimate Warrior was, was a big, big deal, deal, but for a very short run. For a very yes. short time. Mm -hmm. um, Remember the pillow that looked the, like him? Uh, Wrestle Buddies. Yeah. It's funny Wrestle you bring that Buddies. up. It's funny you bring that up because it's brought up in the Vice ah, show. Very nice. That's the moment that he felt like he made it was during uh, he had the wrestle. Oh, I would imagine. Like, oh. you know. Um, I remember but, those commercials. But the whole they? story about this guy, and here's what you need to know about Warrior. Mm -hmm. um, so he got a lot of fans from then, and then he had multiple runs. He came back multiple times in WWF. Uh, it didn't work out. Um, he went to WCW. It didn't work out. Everybody always says the dude was, um, and I, this is another, at times we'll eventually get to stuff that is mm -hmm. uh, not safe for work, nor kids, sure. with Warrior. Okay. Because um, everything that I've come to know, for the most part, is everybody thinks he was an asshole to deal with. Mm. Just all the way through. That he only thought about himself. You would he would think never, a guy named the Ultimate Warrior would be a really nice he guy. Never, he never cared. Again, and I'm just speaking about his time. Let's just say, um, uh, I just want to specify, during when these comics are being made. Okay. Okay? I don't want to talk. I don't what? like talking ill about the dead and stuff like and we're, that. We're talking about what years here? So let's talk about, actually, any time he was during the wrestling business, he was an asshole. Mm. I can't speak about things that happened yeah, sure, sure, after sure, sure, because sure. I haven't watched, but I have watched yeah. numerous and read numerous things that just sh show to back it up. Also, mm -hmm. there's a lot of comments he made later that he's just kind of, he's homophobic. Yeah. He's yeah. extremely yeah. Uh, just, his political views are kind of just out there. He's kind of a, a crazy person and was very um, opinionated about things that mm. were very. Did he believe um, in the reptilians? I don't think he believed in the reptilians. Oh, okay. But so, uh, just not a good guy to deal with. But pursued, obviously, as a character yeah. uh, that all the kids love. He's a wonderful character. A wonderful yeah. character. All the kids yeah. love. The problem is, though, it's hard for adults to relate to him because he's like an overblown kids cartoon. Yeah, sure. Which is also what they kind of feel like they accredit some of the um, downfall to. Like, it's just it was just mm -hmm. for kids, kind of. Mm -hmm. And even him coming mm -hmm. back especially like his run in 96 fans in 96 were more getting used to the attitude era and could care less about mm -hmm. a giant guy painted yeah, up. And yeah. so, um, what was, what was the stone cold run from like when he became stone? It's like well, King of I mean, the ring 96. Okay. King of the ring 96. So we're, we're is talking the, that that's kind of the end of ultimate warrior beginning of stone cold, uh, end of ultimate warrior is actually 1991. Okay. The first run. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So basically what happens that this is a, we haven't even got to the comics, which yeah, is kind of funny, I but know. I knew this would happen because he's just an interesting sure. guy to talk about. Yeah. So he decides the ultimate warrior decides or just warrior that, um, <laughs> I love how you make that distinction. He, well, I have to, and it's funny because it's brought thing. up in the comics later too. Okay. Basically he, he's decided to hold up Vince McMahon for money that he feels like he's owed. He's felt yeah. like he's owed the same thing. I feel as like Hulk that Hogan. happened a lot. In, as, in wrestling. Yes. Yeah. Well, especially him. Like every, the main thing okay. that they say though about him, besides just not being fun to work with and just mm -hmm. being an a hole to deal with, mm -hmm. is that he mainly only cared about, they, they feel like he didn't care about the wrestling business at mm -hmm. all, that it was plan C or D and he was just there for the money. Gotcha. He okay. never, he never felt, uh, Jim Ross, who, when it comes to all things wrestling, I will listen to that man talk mm -hmm. all day and mm -hmm. just love listening to him, said yeah. that a, a really great way to put it was that it seemed like he didn't know about wrestling and had no interest of wanting to know more about it. Yeah. Yeah. So because of that, he was known as a very stiff guy and stiff as a, a wrestling terminology, just like, you know, he would never sure. pull things yeah. as much yeah. as they do. Yeah. Uh, when he would punch you, he'd punch you full force or just mm. be um, the, the main thing uh, is that's really big for wrestlers obviously is your, it, it's kind of a, um, it's a two person job in there. Like to tell the story. So yeah, sure. uh, a lot of moves that they do and everything that they do takes, you know, work from both sides. So you were trusting the other person with your body and with your health. Right. And he was known to be very careless, which obviously a lot of people didn't care about. 
Uh, do you remember uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan? Oh, yeah. So there's a story that Bobby Heenan, from his old days in wrestling and stuff, and as an announcer mm-hmm. and things like, or a mm-hmm. referee and all that, he had a really bad neck. So we always told guys when he was older, like, if you do anything, just be careful. Big brain. Be, be careful with my neck. Sure. Ultimate Warrior. He didn't care. Didn't care. Yeah. Shook him like a rag doll and ended up breaking Bobby's neck. Yeah. He went to him. Jim Cornette tells the story because he's like, Bobby told me himself, point blank, went to him, hey, you broke my neck. Mm-hmm. And Warrior just went, hmm, just walked off, shrugged it off. Wow. Okay. There's a story that just, again, just to tell you the kind of, of guy to paint the picture here that we're mm-hmm. dealing with. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a story that Jake Robert tells where during this time with him as the new champion and the new face, like, um, or they end up giving the or taking the title back, but they're going back for he's got a big run with Warrior coming up, the mm-hmm. giant program plan that they're going to do between Jake Roberts and Ultimate Warrior, uh, and he's like, it's going to be great, but you need to go uh, talk to Warrior about it to make sure he's cool. Mm-hmm. And Jake goes, "You're the boss. Why do I have to go make sure that he's cool? Like working with yeah, me? true, yeah." And Vince goes, "It's just something we got to do. You got to run it by." And he's like, "Okay." He goes, I walked into, them, into you know, mm-hmm. Warrior there. Into and, Warrior's or, I'm office. sorry, into Warrior's. He had a solo locker room. Warrior, Warrior's cubicle. Like, like, that's the thing. Is sure. Apparently, Jim Ross brings up another great point. Is He was a bodybuilder who had never played any other sports, so mm. he didn't know how to deal with a team oh, locker room type. That makes total type. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Sure. So, like, he asked for his own personal locker room. He asked. So, mm. like, Jake had to go to his locker room. Uh, and basically like he gets there and he said, the warrior looked at him and told him like, you know, I don't care about you. I don't care about your family. I don't care about anything you have to deal with. What I care about is me and my money. He goes, you're not going to miss any dates. Cause if you do, you're effing with my money. He's like, you're not going to, and he's like, now get out. <laughs> wow. Like that. And he was like, oh, he was like, from then on, he's like, I just hated the guy. This is Jake, the snake. This is Jake, the snake, Robert. Right? Yeah. Huh. Well, here's the thing. Not so, a pushover. No, so yeah. he leaves. So they have this big deal planned, right? Right. So um, about this time, um, there's some things where he's no longer on top, but he feels like he was just as responsible mm. for keeping the WWF afloat while Hogan was gone and dealing with the steroid trial and stuff like that. Yeah. He felt like he wasn't rightfully compensated. So he writes this letter, like a handwritten letter to Vince McMahon. Mm-hmm. And gives it to him, basically telling like either do this or I'm no showing. It's just unintelligible. It's well, just it's just scribbles <laughs> and it's on a big chief notepad. Uh, and- but and he just <laughs> he just tells him like uh, basically either meet my demands or the SummerSlam pay per view that's coming up. I'm just not that I'm the main event of. I'm just not going to show up. At wow. So Poor Vince guy. writes him a letter back and tells him, all right, we'll do this. We'll meet this deal. We'll do. Well, that, and the yada, thing yada, is, yada. it's not like Vince was a nice guy either. No, he's but, not. Yeah, and. Uh, the story of how he, if I can eventually like get it all and figure it out to tell how it would be epic. But, yeah. um, so Vince just tells him everything because Vince has a mentality of, I have to make sure the match happens or whatever. Yeah, sure. Tells Warrior all about that. It's kind of a big plan. Yeah. Goes out, yeah. does the SummerSlam match, and mm-hmm. he's coming back as soon as he crosses the curtains. Jake Roberts has the next match after, or he's, or he's standing right by Vince. Mm-hmm. And Warrior comes running through. And Vince hands Warrior a letter, and Warrior grabs it and looks at it, and he goes, "Thanks for." Or he goes, "Thanks for doing your match. Now get the f out of here. You're fired." Oh wow, that's for standing me up. And then he yeah, turned and looked at Jake yeah, Roberts, yikes. who had this giant, you know, big program, and goes, "You have to have the worst luck out of anybody I know." And just turned around and left. Wow. And Roberts was like, "I was." Pissed. Oh, I bet. Because that was like my big payday of like yeah. I was going to make more than I had. and Yeah. So there's things like that. Huh. To branch off now from the wrestler into the comics. Oh, yeah. That's why we're here. That's why we're Forgot here. Forgot about that. I'm- so I presented, I brought two things. We have, mm-hmm. and we'll get to 1996. You have a lot I, here. I mean, this is. It's not a lot. It's a thick it's just, dossier that you brought in thick. today. thick. Uh, but I just wanted to show how Ultimate Warrior was presented because um, WWF on, uh, obviously was trying to market to kids mm-hmm. in the 90s. Oh, and sure. so the first appearance of an Ultimate Warrior in a comic for WWF was these books by Valiant. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and um, which was a company there in the early 90s who did other books for other properties along with WWF. Mm-hmm. Like if you look at the back of the way out of it, yeah, like, Nintendo, uh, they also did some Nintendo sure. books, Super mm-hmm. Mario's on mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I had, and I could be mistaken, but I think I had as a kid a Zelda comic that was made by Valiant. Oh, yeah, I don't doubt that. Um, sure. So... But it's basically what they do here is it's this one's called just the ultimate warriors workout. Mm. And I brought it not really to go over, but just to show the drastic difference, mm. if anything, mainly of how he's portrayed in the 90s and mm. somebody else doing this of showing like, hey, this is the ultimate warrior. Like, you know, he works out by lifting giant rocks and like throwing cinder, cinder blocks, blocks sure. and like. Exploding. Oh, he threw it into a scoreboard. It's all larger than life stuff, but they're right. selling it to kids. He's throwing logs. He, yeah, no, he dodges logs while running mm. up a hill. This is mm. all how he trains, and he's just explaining what it means to be a warrior. Mm-hmm. But it's very wholesome. There's nothing. I just brought that just sure. to flip through. No, like, this is wonderful. Yeah. Um, it's it, you know the thing about it, it's it's not like it's bad art or anything like that. I mean, it's 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 a good looking comic book. Yes. I mean, it's obviously for kids. I think it's from like '91. Yeah. Uh, so it's just it's a very you know simple comic it's a story of uh and they have other like you know wrestlers in there too like a yeah. sensational uh sherry is in there he's, um, he's over here lifting like what has to be a million pounds right and there's an old man with his pants all hiked up and he goes geez be careful ultimate yeah it's not a sentence no he's cool <laughs> enough that you can call him ultimate ultimate so it is a very just lighthearted, just you know yeah sure 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 it, it's basically a non-moving cartoon is all it yeah. is. I mean, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a funny paper. So kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, the ups and downs, the ins and outs, uh, a lot happens uh, from his high point of where he was wrestling Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania six for the uh, heavyweight championship. And then, can, can you know, I, to a year. Can I read a quick quote? Yeah, read a quick quote. We've never used so many logs before. If he isn't at his ultimate best, oh. he'll be jelly. Oh, no, keep reading. There's another. That. No, there was another oh. jelly reference there. I another think. jelly reference. So this is. Sponsored, I thought it was something jam. Like sponsored there's a, by Smuckers. Uh, yeah. Would that be a log jam? Mm-hmm. So. It literally says. It mm-hmm does. Under it. So after <laughs> the highs, there comes a little bit. Of, there's great. the firing from WWF. Sure. Um, is that in this comic? No, it's not. <laughs> end, it but says, it's like a year just after a that, around the time. It's like, it's like 92 when that happens. Okay. Into 91, 92. Gotcha, sure. Um, and so like he kind of like goes off and uh, does his own thing for a while. Yeah, that was when Sergeant Slaughter was with yeah. um, uh, the Sheik and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the Iranian conflict. Uh-huh. Um, but during this, and he comes back and he has like a stint. Um, at a time, but there's this story of how I was always introduced to this and I never read these comics, but as a wrestling fan, how I always heard the story was, um, Hogan had gone to WCW Hulk Hogan had Randy Savage had gone to WCW. Right. Sure. Sure. Um, everybody was leaving ship, um, and as talented as Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels were, uh-huh. they weren't able to just, you know, take over the uh, same ratings that WCW was. The Mountie? Yeah. I don't know who that is. I've never uh, heard of the Mountie. That, the Mountie is, oh, and I can't believe I'm blanking on his name right now. All of these He's uh, Rougeau. Um, Jacques Rougeau, I think is his name. Oh, so he's a Canadian guy. Yeah, that's why it's the Mountie. Okay, um, yeah, they they went out for the names here. Yeah, the um, Undertaker doesn't even have his hat or anything. That's how early no, this is. Yeah. yeah. So big um, boss man. Oof. Basically, Vince wants to bring Warrior back because yeah. he's made him a star before. He sure. can make it work again. Um, and he's like, you know, Vince always has always loved. They do tend to go to the well a lot. They do, but it's yeah. it's 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 a Vince thing. Apparently, I find from also listening to a lot of stories and stuff is mm-hmm. he believes that he is. Oh, another thing I guess I should add about Warrior real quick, along with him being an a hole, is the fact that he thinks he's smarter than everybody else too. Okay, that makes sense. Um, that would be needed for other parts we're about to get into with the mm-hmm. comic book and stuff. Sure, but so basically, Vince takes other writers and producers at the time on this meeting out to Arizona where warrior is living. Mm -hmm. And while they're out there, you know, basically pitching him and hearing about him coming back, 
um, and what they can do in wrestling. He talks to him about his comic book and stuff. Okay. And that's all I ever knew was that and the fact that Bruce Pritchard and Jim Cornette, uh, when they would talk about it, would talk about that he would always talk about distrucity. Distrucity. Now, what distrucity is, is pl- laid out, I will not say plain and clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it is super confusing to me. Well, if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen Ultimate Warrior cut a promo, mm. that's what all this comic book is like. Because okay. in 1996, uh, in May when this came out, Ultimate Warrior, or just Warrior, mm-hmm. because Ultimate Warrior is owned by WWF, that's why he could only change his name to gotcha, Warrior. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Warrior released his own self-published comic mm-hmm. called Warrior. Self-published. Self-published okay. by Warrior Creations. <laughs> and in here, the very first page we get, mm-hmm. here, I'll let you. I forgot. I brought my iPad so you could leaf through oh, nice. this. It is, it, it makes no sense um, to me at least. But what destrucity is, is basically what the warrior lives his life by. Mm. Uh, simply put, I'm not going to go into in any of this, I'm basically just going to quickly just summarize stuff because I have tried to read it, but it's super confusing, and that's how he speaks and everything. Mike, this comic lasted four issues. I read all four issues. Uh-huh. Do you want me to tell you what is happening in the comic? Because I can't. <laughs> So let's get things started since Destrucity is such a big thing of this series, though, of giving you the definition that is provided by the ultimate warrior himself. <laughs> Dreams are the movies that tell one story. Some already told, some not yet written. Mm, boy. So according to Warrior, Destrucity, trifold in its definition. Trifold. Therefore meaning, one, the name of the galaxy in Warrior wherein the terrain of testament lies. That's the entire first definition of destrucity. Two. It's, it, there's a galaxy in him. The living of one's life in the way of a warrior according uh-huh. to a warrior's eight disciplines. Oh, boy. Here they come. Those are as follows. Physical. <laughs> beliefs. <laughs> moment of mastery. <laughs> attitude. Yeah. Commitment, Uh association, Association. integrity, and wisdom. Wisdom being the last one. Three. Sure. The creating of a truce between one's destiny and one's reality. Promising to stay true to what one is destined to be, yet accepting what is the now or what is the now one's reality. Boy, oh boy. Do you understand Distrucity now? Nope. Yep, I don't either. The creating and of a truce between one's destiny and one's reality. So what the uh, truce, what the, uh, <laughs> the I, I guess, um, wrestling figures in Bruce Pritchard and Jim Cornette both mentioned, though, is that they're listening to this, not understanding anything, that he's all about destrucity. Right. And he's just telling them that this is what Warrior, the character of Warrior is about. And he's ta- talking uh, talking to him about all this comic book, and he's just pitching him about this word of destrucity and how it's what the warrior is, and they don't understand any of it. Did he pay for this? Yeah, this is all self published. Wow. Okay. So, all right. A uh, funny thing that I'll add in because this is not cheap. No, it is not. Yeah, because beautiful um, art, beautiful, very by uh, yeah, Jim wonderful. Callahan. Uh huh. Callahan um, and Smith. I don't Smith remember who is, Smith is. But, yeah, remember Jim Callahan, because that is going to be known for this. Okay. Um, Poor guy. But yeah, <laughs> going to uh, break his career. I bet. So uh, it's funny about this meeting that they had too, where he's plugging this whole comic book uh-huh. to them and like trying to get them to do it. Um, Jim Ross, this is kind of the moment where Jim Ross basically, uh, it seems starts to dislike warrior. Okay. And it's because he goes, uh, you know, you're around your dudes. You talk however filthy you want sure, to. He goes, sure. he's Jim Ross is a very, he's a, a an Oklahoma guy. So he's an yeah. you know, old yeah. Southern guy. Yeah. And I've, yeah. uh, had the, uh, privilege of interviewing him before. It was really? very nice. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Very nice. Yeah, good uh, for you. and I've always liked Jim Ross, but he yeah. said that, you know, you talk the way you do around your buddies, but around somebody's wife, he yeah. goes, I always make sure just to be respectful and Absolutely. all that. And he goes, sure. and Linda was with us. 
And he goes, Linda is his wife. Linda JR's McMahon. Wife? No, Linda McMahon oh, Linda is McMahon. Vince's wife. And obviously, uh, po- politics and everything aside from this, yeah, 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 when yeah, it comes yeah. to sure. the two of them, uh, everybody seems to adore Linda. Yeah. So uh, well, as I a mean, person, if, if you had the choice between yeah, the two, I yeah. mean. <laughs> but as a person, like Jim Ross said that he had never worked for a nicer lady. Oh, so, that's cool. Um, yeah. He obviously holds Linda in high regard, mm-hmm. but he said that warrior was just F this C word that oh, just like letting goodness. everything. And he was like, for him to do that in front of another, just not care. He goes, that just kind of showed me the kind of person well, it he does. was. It then. shows character. Yeah. He goes, and then the fact that he's like, when we would bring people in, he was like, it was usually that like Vince was there for the first meeting, like even big, like when yeah. Hogan came yeah. back, yeah, sure. he's like, he's there for the first meeting because they need to see the boss to say what they need to. Mm-hmm. He goes, but after that, they deal with me. He was like, warrior felt that he was special. He just dealt with Vince only kind mm. of thing. And so he never liked that either, but it's just interesting stories to hear from this time. Well, and that's also Vince's fault, you know, for not, not standing up to him. Well, if he wanted to about. Well, that's the thing, though, is uh, apparently Vince is completely by its destrucity hook, line, and sinker. Oh, he loves it, huh? At the time, okay. yeah. yeah. I think that it's more sense. of him just wanting Ultimate Warrior back. But let's go ahead yeah. and get into the comic and try to explain Warrior. what destrucity is um, and be prepared to not get an answer. Mm-hmm. Basically, we can flip through this pretty quick because sure. it's all nonsensical. And none of it is really follows anything. <laughs> so there's a blonde guy who's dressed in like a singlet with mm-hmm. uh, tassels wrapped around him. Mm-hmm. And um, he's just like floating. He's floating. And then all of a sudden he breaks out of the tassels and mm-hmm. he's like kind of naked, but not. And red yeah. guys are grabbing at him. Demons looking. I guess. Like and then he like, there's like an explosion from like a meteor, mm-hmm. but there's no meteor. It's just him laying he, down in the crater hole. Yeah, and he's he's bloody. He's, he's got his single uh, little uh, underwear on. Yeah, but he also has his boots. Yeah, and it's the whole time it's talking and it says things. There's these yellow boxes and red boxes. Like mm-hmm. for one, the yellow box says, "Follow me, you bastard." No one spills my blood, then vanishes. I will seek you out wherever. And then the red one says. Once a man has a vision, he has belief, even if nothing at all. What? Yep. And so that's all the yeah. taglines for this comic yeah. are, things like that. And that's why I'm not going to read through or try to explain the story much, because I really can't follow it. Um, it spoke in a lot of just, again, uh, go watch. And I'm not saying this to be uh, mean, because some people like it. Sure. But go watch a Ultimate Warrior promo. Mm-hmm. And just imagine a whole comic book with that. Mm. And that's what this is here. Yeah. Um, but so then all of a sudden, like he's too weak and rain comes over wait, and wait. then he's frozen. Okay. And then he like loses his underwear, I guess. But it comes back. I don't know. He loses the singlet. So hang on one second. There, There is there is a, a sentence here by him that says time to get folked. I forgot about that. Folked. This is the first one, too. He creates his own words in this comic. There's three uh-huh. instances. You have discovered the first one. Right? I did it. Yay. And if you will look under his eyes, yeah, he has really. given a definition where folked means focused. Oh, okay. Why not just say focused? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> okay. Folked means sure. focused. Folk comes up a lot. Folked. He's like, got to stay folk. Time to get folked. You will see that a couple times right. throughout this. The terrain of Testament. That is where he's at. He's just Uh like moving along the terrain of Testament. It looks great. There's like, he looks up (laughs) to the stars and there's like the ultimate warrior logo and the stars. And then his eyes roll back in his head. And then it just says destrucity again. And it's Mm. like, he's standing next to a very tall guy. who's holding his hand. And then he like dips his hand in the water. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm kind of a little bit. It's like, it's like, uh, it's almost like Zeus or something. Right. And then it says set in in stone as if, as in a father, father. Yes, son. Yours. I have been. That's right. Ghost dad in the lake. (laughs) So, and he's, he's like twice as big as he is. Uh, Apparently his dad is a lake ghost. Oh, (laughs) And okay. <laughs> I love again, that. I don't really know. We like see ghosts. like flashes of like yeah. a time past where he's like, I think I said he fought with his brother fighting some dude. 
Uh, is that a brother? Your it doesn't say your connect your conception challenged in the living of your life as a warrior balanced in the definition of disciplines to destrucity. What? I can't even. Yeah, that's just I'm reading it verbatim. What? Like usually it's me messing up English, but all that surrounds you exists for you. For you have drawn it before you your destiny. Okay. So sure. Like he dips his hands in the water and then it comes but up it's and it's blood. like blood. Yeah. And uh, then it just ends with warrior in red font. And then he sees a woman's reflection Uh and he just says my angel. And then he like dives into the water and swims Uh down deep into the water. Well, it says my angel. And then underneath it, it says reasons for living. Those are the two different boxes you were talking about, the yellow and the red. And then he becomes Aquaman. Yep. And then he goes, my journey home begins now. And he's at the bottom. And then he like shoots up to the top of the water and it says the student is ready. Oh. And then he starts fighting these hooded creatures that kind of look like Ewoks. <laughs> but they have Ultimate Warrior logos for eyes. Yeah. Huh. Uh, and then it's uh, must always create a method, even within madness, mo- moment by moment. He like just basically uh-huh. beats them all up while the terrain is constantly changing behind him. When you hit somebody in the, in the, uh, when you hit a hooded creature, with ultimate warrior logos for eyes in the in the uh, chin, it makes the sound of puck. Yeah. P O K. Puck. 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 Not to be confused with folk. Nope. Folk. So then I he, don't get folked. He basically just fights these hooded figures for like seven pages. Mm-hmm. Seven pages. Yeah. Oh my god. And then he like rips out like their spinal cord or thwack, something. Thwack, thwack, slap, wood, boot, crack, crack, pock, whack, bip, bonk, wump. And then enough. Yeah. Wow. But then here what a guy. is it? No, you're. I'm Yet sorry, I long, long for even more. Yeah, he's still Dude, now he he's fighting. He, well, but he's kind of fighting in the clouds time. over here, right? See, and the then, terrain changes the whole yeah, time. Yeah, everything changes while he fights. Giant so lamb. it's it's basically like that's all that's happening is he's just fighting these hooded creatures while more nonsense bubbles are behind him. Uh-huh. And then he basically, for lack of a better term, I'm just kind of hold on till you get to the next panel. Yeah. Because I think he like rips out like one of their spines or something and uses it as like tassels. <laughs> if you so like I need flip, to turn here. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so. Because it doesn't tell you what he does. Death delivers no answer amongst the living, only that we are all capable. Naked is, and exposed. Again, brought here, protected sentence. only by the skin of self. I take from your physical the very same the the sheath the sheath that holds the sword of your beliefs your soul forever mine forever bound what by your kid sacrifice is this? right so then like a flash of lightning and he now uh-huh. is turned into like an orange and red ultimate warrior he's yeah. got a mask he's smoking like he's been not he's been like struck. a cigarette no, like no, 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 physically no. like smoke yeah, there's is. smoke coming off of him yeah and he's like twice as big as he was. And then it says a synchronous moment held close yet so far away. Well, he's so big and it just says full blown. And then we just flash to the city. Okay. Yeah. And there's a guy. He's in a yeah. in a coma uh-huh. with a girl there with him. Uh-huh. And she's crying. She's yeah. sad. Can't know. Don't want to imagine my, my life, life without, without him. And then the next yeah. page shows... A guy with a very flat head. And just says, believe this uh-huh. in and of another moment. Uh, and that's where what? it is. Wait, what? Wait, that's the end? That's the end of the first issue. What the F? Oh, wait. We've got oh, wait. Stuff. Is there yeah. more? No, well, there's, yeah, I think it's this. Okay. Oh, uh, I forgot now about. Now, this does say the meaning of the story I wish to tell upon the pages of Warrior can be captured in one word, belief. Some 24 years ago, around the age of 12, Belief became the most important factor in my life. My first encounter with the powers of belief. What? Wait, what? Uh, a consciousness of belief. And you gotta, you gotta understand there are periods in here. <laughs> um, a consciousness of belief happened through the power of fantasy, a make-believe friend, if you will. At the time, my friend didn't have a name. He didn't. This dude is nuts. 
I mean, because this, to be honest with you, it, it, so the the thing ends right with with Flathead being real mean looking. Yeah, well, there's more stuff, and, and then but it, it's not really. Well, but what I'm saying is, then it goes to like a manifesto. Basically, there's there's, I, I don't know, a dozen paragraphs here. Yeah, there's a lot. Of just stuff. It's, wow, yeah, that's nutty. If somebody brought you that and it wasn't in a comic book, you would go, oh, this guy needs help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we go to a part where it's just like line drawings. Yeah. No color. But this is like, I guess, like trying to explain. It's like that uh, woman that we saw in his arms, but it's. Mm-hmm. I guess this is kind of a flashback. It, of, it is, but it's it's basically just promoting Warrior University. The, Warrior University? Yeah. You didn't see Warrior oh. University? Oh, and it's like a place where you can come to learn to be a warrior. Did he and it's sell like, steaks like Trump too? Uh, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> warrior but, steaks. Oh, I remember. I do remember reading this now. It's about this woman uh, who's like, you know, she doesn't get praised. Like she just keeps, you know, get talked down to. Like her mom tells her she wishes she never had been born. And she's like, she wants to take pills and like to kill herself. But then the warrior like saves uh-huh. her, and she decides to be a warrior instead okay. and go to Warrior University. Okay. Right. It's weird. I well, don't know. And in Warrior University, for those of you who don't remember, uh, their their catchphrase was always walls built to the outside to learn of the walls within. An institution of higher learning, learning to believe in yourself and the truth within one's intuition, learning to trust the voice of one's own spirit, the higher self, learning to live one's life in a way of the warrior distrusity. That yeah. it was tough to fit on a flag, yeah. but but that is that that was their catchphrase. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's also an ad in here and it's in all of them for warriors world where he also offers a video workout. Oh, uh, but it's not a workout. Okay. You know what it is? Cause I saw a clip of it online. Uh. It's a video like mixtape kind of together of him working out and him just like yelling, like, uh, just yelling at you. Yeah. Like you gotta be, you know, ready and work, make sure you're in the right mindset. But I love this. Uh, he set the still unchallenged. He set the still unchallenged standard for integ art for intensity in the world of professional wrestling. Now watch as he as he power slams the comic book industry with a take no prisoners attitude in storytelling and artwork. Uh huh. Okay. Warrior shows no prejudice. It kicks everything from skinny buck to big fat chewy ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I need to do something here. Um. So, uh, <laughs> there is a one nine hundred number here at the back. Yeah. It says the who, what, why, and even where of the one and only warrior. Call one nine hundred two eight eight war with two R's. Uh, I'm going to call that now, and let's see uh, see what we get. Restricted or is unavailable. Please oh. contact customer care for assistance. Well, well, that's too bad. That's too bad. But you know what, Mike? There's no better place than right now. <laughs> For us to hear a few words <laughs> from Great. our sponsors. Please do it. And now, a word from our sponsor. And welcome back. Uh, if you missed us during the break, don't worry. Mike found a customer service number we're trying now. Yeah, this is the Warrior customer service number. It's Arizona. Come on. What do we do? Let's start talking to him. <laughs> this is the customer service number at Warrior's World. Please leave your message for 602 602- Five, six, six, four. Hello, warrior. I miss you, brother. That person is we'll going to have the weird. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> what happened? <laughs> Retailers can inquire about a wholesale price. It says at the bottom of this. <laughs> That's, That's great. Have done. It's not a done. I just been like, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm looking I'm for a wholesale, wholesale price. price. I'd love to get some of this warrior merchandise, like, oh, like. Man. T-shirts, hats, satin jackets, T-shirts, hats, watches, sweatshirts, T-shirts, staff shirts, staff shirts. Well, no, it's because each one you can yeah. get. Hats, gym bags, posters, photo packs, workout belts, collector's T-shirts. Yes, and you're right. It is under different headings here. So there is warrior wear, 
trademark, Warrior University, trademark, Warrior Gym, trademark, and also available, non-trademark. Huh. Yep. Boy, that is a so, lot that's available from Warrior. So the other issues won't take as long because we have a nice little kind of like premise, obviously. <laughs> Fat, chewy ass. That's it <laughs> from skinny butt. That's the best. To So this is where it takes a turn. Is this I'm guy ever hospitalized? Like I don't think so. Mental facility? Uh, here's what okay. I, this is where it took a turn for me before you open this up because- mm. Uh, I'm reading through this and I read the first issue and I'm like, what in the world? Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times after I get done reading stuff, then I'll go on and look at stuff through YouTube. Yeah. But I want to be able to read through to find like, okay. Right. And I got smacked with this on the very next page. If you'll open it up. Yes. Okay. I do. Can you, can you tell me about the, okay. First of all, the cover cover. here, it says mirror image Mm -hmm. and it's basically a mirror image Uh of warrior. He's he's like silver surfer, but he looks looks a mirror color. He fights a mirror image of himself later. And he has a, has a a, a snaggletooth dog. That part doesn't matter. Okay. You can ignore the comic for this because this is where the story gets good. Oh, good. About the comic book for me. Starts at warrior university. It does. So it opens up to a blackboard uh, on the very front page, and it says, needs to know. And I'm going to read a little bit of it, but then basically summarize a lot of it because it's it's a full page of dialogue. He likes to tell you a lot of stuff. <laughs> but he's basically saying that their buddies over at Fan Magazine have supported their journey in the comic book universe since day mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. yada, yada, yada. Basically, he agreed to meet with uh, two people, as he names Mike Rieger and uh, John McGonagall uh, okay. at the Chicago Comic Con. To McGonagall. make it short, they eat, they go and they meet at this French restaurant. No, 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 no. It does not say that. It says w- he met at this foo foo French place. But I was trying to just. Okay. All right. Okay. Here, here's what yeah. I'll keep it short while you read the whole thing. I don't thing. think anybody's going to be offended by f- the word foo foo. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. I'm not okay. cutting out for that. All I'm right, just cutting right, out right, for right. sheer yeah, time gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. to read through the whole thing. Uh, but basically, <laughs> he says that one of the guys tells him to ki- to kiss, to keep it simple, stupid. Sure, sure. And say that basically, uh, issue one was very hard to follow. So just keep it simple. <laughs> Warrior took it as an offense. Come and on. Says that he shoved a piece of bread down Mike Rieger's throat. He stuck. He says he stuck a whole loaf of sourdough, which yeah. is not a French bread. No, so right. I don't know. I think he confused French bread for sourdough. Sure. Stuck it down his throat and proceeded to wee-wee out of there before the local authorities hit the joint. Yeah. So basically, he then <laughs> says basically, uh, he says that uh, once I thought about it, he's right. I probably needed to make things simpler. So here's what I'll tell you. He calls the police the policia. He does. He goes, first and foremost... Warriors being challenged upon the terrain of testament. This is an explanation of what we just went over. Okay, Mike? (laughs) To become the ideal of what a warrior is as a vision to others, i.e., for anything to become something, the idea of it has to be brought to life and simply exist. Uh An example is this comic book or that piece of paper, this iPad that I hold in my hand. Uh, and I lost my spot. Oh, before it was called a comic book, somebody had to have it ha- or the idea of it even uh, before it existed. Yeah. The next step was to create it. And He's today, like God. We all know it to be a comic book. Yeah. We don't question it. Now, in the comic book industry, you have many different styles of comic book. Still the same a comic book. <laughs> same thing with Warrior. He is being challenged to become the first one. The idea, the (laughs) definition of warrior, so to speak. Uh, The first one to live his life staying true to to his own disciplines. You ever notice that people trying to sound smart say stuff like so to speak and IE and things like that? The first one willing to die for (laughs) like true to themselves, willing to die for whatever beliefs they choose. Okay. It's hard to tell where punctuation is. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off, but you're right. No, they, no, people you're all good. Do you're, all, no, please. I cut you off. Yeah, uh, Use the big words. Yeah. <laughs> they use all the big words. Mm-hmm. Um, where was that? There we go. They choose. Warrior is being tested in the eight disciplines. See inside back cover and try to find issue number one. I guess he thinks that that's <sighs> hot off the shelves, right? Sure. Um, his beliefs to be the idea. 
the ideal warrior, one with such a strength in his beliefs that he is willing to die for them. Enough said. Now. Wait, he just said enough said. Now, the telling of the story <laughs> is happening from two points of view, Mike. Okay. The first is a take action. Aggressive, outward expression. A can of kick butt is getting ready to be opened. It doesn't say that. It says a can of butt kick. Oh, I'm sorry, butt kick. It's not even in the right order. No. It's butt kick. Uh, point of view, and secondly, an introspective, <laughs> intuitive inner self. Let's think this situation through yeah. point of view. The former one done. Here's my favorite part of this, though, Mike. You ready? Yes, yes. The former one done in red caption and the latter in pale yellow. Red okay. representing the explosive side of the warrior, sure. while yellow represents the integrity of his thoughts, his folk. Remember? Focus. Yes, folk. His folk. Got it. Yeah. Note, warrior number one has colors reversed. Then why not just keep it the same? That's what I'm, I don't understand. So, we completely changed colors of what the thought bubbles meant. Sure. We've tried to explain it. Also, beginning in this issue, the belief banners which are ribbons warrior ties around his arms show life for the first time and therefore speak this issue, the belief banners and their personalities <laughs> plus important or plus importance will become more evident. So there you have it. Oh, they're also in purple. They're represented by purple colored balloons. So we have a comic now to explain for you. If you can't listen at home, that is being told from two points of view has speech bubbles in yellow and red that represent two different sides of Warrior. His ribbons talk in a balloon that is purple. And also, in this giant note, he has told you that he a, uh, he assaulted a guy with some sourdough <laughs> and also felt the need. There, here's might be my favorite part of it. Yeah. At the very bottom, yeah. there is a key, like if you were looking at a map. That's what I was going to say. You've written a lot of stuff. I have. How often do you have to include a key? Never. Yeah. But there's a key for the word warrior, and uh -huh. it has different colored stars by it. Uh -huh. Above, when it was used with the yellow star, it sure. was specifically the title of the comic. When it was used above with the blue star, that was him. That's right. Character warrior and real life person. <laughs> When it was the Red Warrior, generally speaking, as in he is a great warrior, but not the one. So. So I can imagine a time when our society has crumbled and aliens have visited the planet and they're trying to figure out what happened. Yeah. Right. And this is all that's left. This, 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 this diatribe here this is me trying to be smart this diatribe of just word vomit yeah on this page i can't imagine a child picking this up and going daddy what is i don't i'm lost what does this mean yeah this is crazy. when challenging yourself include your mind by the way yeah so knowledge is power we can always believe breeze through this because again the mm. comic as weird as it is, is not the fun part of the story for me. Well, what I like right here on the very first panel is there's, there, it looks like there's a guy leaving with his gym bag, a guy walking in. One of them says, pencil me in. And the other one says, get a life muscle head. Yeah. I don't even know what they're referring to. Don't know what, don't, uh, you're not going to figure out anything. Here's okay. the highlights of this. This is uh, outside of Warrior University, by the way. Yeah, outside yeah. of Warrior University. We're going to, basically what we do is we split time between the real world <laughs> With Warrior, and then the terrain of Testament with the other Warrior who's battling to become the first Warrior. That's the best way I can explain it, or the best Warrior. I don't know, the true Warrior. Uh -huh. Highlights of this comic include uh, some guy touching another guy's shirt and him thinking he's going to steal it from him. That's not how you <laughs> steal shirts. Um, there's a giant blast that comes into where we find out Warrior was in the coma, uh, and it's like a giant um, spirit from somewhere out in the galaxy. Um, we're going to find out later that that's like s basically a bad spirit inhabiting warrior. Yeah, It's never really broad. I mean, it's kind of explained a little bit, but that's it. Um, then we go back to the terrain of Testament. Um, He's trying to steal my Abplex shirt. <laughs> yeah. Here's what I thought was weird. There is a, a so usually in comics, have you ever seen one where you had to turn it sideways to get the full view? No, I have not. Yeah, that is weird. So that was a weird thing. There's a part in this issue where it's, it's like the so fold in the middle. You big. have to turn it sideways yeah. huh. to show off what the... 
it's the arrival of the mirror image is okay. what that is that All he right. battles. Um, he fights his beast. He fights the mirror image. He wins. Oh uh, boy, this has adult language in it. Too. Oh, it has a lot. But find if um, when he finally wakes up from his coma, he goes fall. Yeah, they do that whole little like just cut off right before the K. Wait, um, what did what does that say? I can't scrunk. Yeah, okay. that's a scrunk. Scrunk. Sure. There's also okay. I, I might miss them as I'm breezing through because again to me this isn't the best or the the story isn't the main story here. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he just keeps fighting this guy. Whatever. Who cares? What in the fuck? Yeah, he does it again. He Once uses again. folk. Uh, yeah. He uses jet jacked uh, as a word jacked. that he uses, which is like adrenaline or like amped up. Oh neat. Um. Issue three. Um, he uses the word offa also. Yeah. Instead of get off of me, it's get, get off of me. O F F A, get off of it. Yeah. Me. What does it mean when he's speaking in red? Uh red is the like the aggressive side. Okay, sure. So then the third issue is more of the same. He includes the Remember, same. Kids, keep your key handy as you're reading through this. He does. Exciting and he adventure. includes at the beginning of each issue then. Oh, nice. Here, I'll just, yeah. I'll keep, uh, I'll go ahead and give you the third one then so you can get into right after. Yeah. Again, there's only four. And again, right. just flip through at your leisure because the story does not matter. Sure. Um, Just because it makes no sense. Because what happens is Warrior in the real life, we find out, is basically like inhabited by an evil spirit from the terrain of Testament kind of thing. Terrain of Testament. So he's like a real asshole. Like this kid sure. asked for his autograph and he, you know, tells him to basically get away from him. And the girl that he's with is like, <laughs> Hey, he's just not himself right now. Yeah. And he tells her, don't you make excuses for me? And he gets out of the uh, limo that picks him up from the hospital and his butler or the driver has the wheelchair that he was in. He goes, your wheelchair chair sir allow me and he goes are you effing kidding me and he throws the wheelchair like up into space <laughs> let's also why remind is there you, a green baby in this i don't know okay i don't i'm sorry a green baby shows up yeah um, turns into a green child all of it was written by warrior okay it is ink makes total sense. and draw it's like done the arts by callahan mm -hmm. but all the story and stuff is warrior yeah this is um this is madness. This yeah. Is so is. basically evil warrior in the real world just leaves his girlfriend, uh -huh. um, regular or, uh, ultimate warrior, whatever he is in the te Testament terrain of Testament. I'm so confused now. Yeah. Other place warrior is running and Good all of a sudden God. a plane's crashing out of nowhere. I don't know how there are people on the train of Testament. Okay. This whole thing makes no sense. It's like the Val jet. I'm just going to read part of this. Yeah. Because this whole, it's a plane crashing and like catching on fire with people on it. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, what you're going to know, and I'm not diving into it because it's a lot of, you know, mumbo jumbo. He believed in stuff and uh, that's just kind of weird and out there. But this one just to <laughs> me, it's like Mayday. We got major flames. Jesus. Uh, it's the curse of the spawn. These are what passengers are saying as it's going down. He says it's the curse of the spawn while he's holding a spawn comic book. And then one guy says, oh, that's what it was. I forgot about that. Hold on, Mike. Hey, hang on. I, I need to I need to refer to something here. Um, <laughs> is when, it in that one or is it in the, this the, one? To this one, when he gets out of the uh, hospital. Is it the doctor? The doctor says, man, yes. I got some preposterous flatulence. And then in the next next panel, we've got his fans who I guess are being okay. Whoever did this is not great at hands because everybody's got their hands in their pockets. Uh, there's one guy up front wearing a Dark Side Comics shirt. The guy next to him is wearing a shirt with a mouth open that says "Get Beefed, Eat Sushi." And then for some reason, Ren and Stimpy are in this. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. Why is, are Ren and Stimpy in this? Don't know. Don't know. And if you keep going, Mike, later when the uh, plane crashes, yeah, then I'm like, you know, I, he's just so. This is evil warrior. When the plane crashes, though, I told you about the guy complaining about the spawn. There's a guy on an oxygen mask that says, "Man, I just shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> this can't be real." Wow. So, like, I don't know why this plane is crashing. And then the cop or one, the pilot goes, "We're going to die," and the other pilot says. Shut the hell up, you born again freak. And yes, you certainly can kiss your ass. Goodbye. Yeah. yeah. Here's what I don't understand. 
is at this point, like, I don't get where the born again comes from because no. there's no reference whatsoever. No. Yeah. Just seems like he just felt the need to put it in there. Okay. And again, that's, it's his, he self-published it. He sure. can put whatever he sure. wants to he in. Can. Yeah. And he did. Uh, and he did. Sure. Um, but then, so the plane crashes and here's another thing that you will find out about, uh, <laughs> ultimate warrior is he goes to save people from the wreckage because uh-huh. a hand breaks out and his tassels that can talk say, stop him. Evolution has no place for altruism. That's right. <laughs> we don't need to take care of people. Okay. So, um, this one guy's melting. Yeah. And he just leaves them. Instead, he goes and he decides to kill a two headed snake instead. Okay. Don't well, know why. I mean, sure. And then he winds up at like this emerald looking city on the terrain of Testament. Back in the real world. Hang, hang on. Okay. Uh, after he kills the two headed snake, it, it goes sp- 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 splatter. And then he breaks into like this this pose, you know, like you've seen Ultimate Warrior many times. Yeah. Where he's got both arms to his sides, you know, and he's really flexing his muscles. And apparently that makes the sound of Swaz's nip. Swaz's nip. And then, <laughs> and then he says, sacrifices in the name of destrucity. Wow. That's great. Good deal. Yep. Uh, and back now in the, we're at Slippery's Pool and Suds. There you go. At Slippery's sure. Pool and sp- sp- Spuds. Sp- they just, sp- I couldn't get that out. Yeah. It's just pulling potatoes. Um, <laughs> pool and Spuds. That's not a bad business plan. Uh, nah, it's not really. Sure. Um, Warriors just drinking there. Somebody in the bar decides to act tough and try to beat him up, and he ends up, like, just, you know, yeah. taking everybody out in there. Yeah. Like just straight up murking fools with a, but he's got like a like a high kick that he puts to this guy's chin. Yeah, and he's wearing a shirt that says Mambo. Yeah. Well, then on the next page, hey, butt breath. Can't you read? The sign says no smoking. Uh, hey, butt breath. Then at the end of it, we get like a warrior, <laughs> and it says breath. number four coming out, like hyping the next issue. Uh huh. We get another page about hey, this is what destrucity is again. You get an ad for Spawn's War of Retribution. So Spawn had an ad in here. You know, you get an ad for Chaos Comics. So he's, you know, able Mm -hmm. to get some. Mm -hmm. And then there's Warrior Warrior Wisdom coming in issue number four. In your face, up your nose, riding your ass, cutting you no slack. Mm. Is what it says. Up your nose. Yep. Okay. And then it gives the whole explanation again. And then, Mike, that is what caught my eye at the end of the third one. Uh huh. You see the uh, color ad there, or the ad with it's an ad with a bunch of crayons behind it, right? Uh huh. Can you read that? I mean, it's hard to read because of the font. Ultimate Creations Inc. Warrior is looking for artists who are up to more than just crayon crushing, pencil shoving, and ink dipping. No good. What is this shit artwork? We can also do without the ball busting. Give me five hundred dollars a page plus royalties. Um, title and deed title and deed to all the pages attitude of these assholes but if you are wanting to show the world just how fragging good you are and get a fair price while you're setting the record straight we might be interested in seeing your stuff if you're an established artist who loves what you do but are looking to get paid fairly and regularly and are of a healthy ego. Which is not, funny to me because Warrior was <laughs> never of a healthy ego. Not an overblown one. Warrior, it, that's not the end of the that's sentence. That's not the person. It's Warrior, Warrior the comic. Sure, okay. Warrior could be the project where your voice is heard best throughout the comic industry. But don't expect me to listen to it. Wait, what? Yeah, no. Seriously, if you're serious, seriously, if you're serious, send your goods your artwork, Einstein, to Always Believe in Warrior, Ultimate Creations, Inc., 15560 North Frank Lloyd Wright Boulevard, Boulevard Suite B-1-409, Scottsdale, Arizona, 85260. So I was like, huh, that's wow. weird. And yeah, so, so he, like, then, fired his artists at the so end of this comic. So yeah. to Jim Callahan with pencils and ink? <laughs> and then I get to, <laughs> you know what, before we get there, before, let me save that, because let me show you. In between this time, because there was some time off. <laughs> sure. No, uh, no, come on. There was a little bit of time off from issue three to issue four, sure. where a Christmas special came out. Oh, boy. And all that is is just a collection. I think basically somebody was given <laughs> the phrase, Ultimate Warrior Saves Christmas, because uh. it's just a page full of pinups. Mm. Like, that's all this is. 
in here, and it's mm-hmm. Ultimate Warrior is like he's scaring kids apparently on Christmas. Yeah, um, he's in their house. Just there's... wait. There's one that we're gonna get to. That when we get to, oh, oh there he is choking out choking the Grinch. The Grinch, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. There he is. I guess like listening to he's kids. He's like a mall Santa. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. he's uh, killing something. Yeah, and I can't tell. Popping out. There we go. What am I looking at here? Um, he's got Santa in chains at the North Pole, and I guess he's whipping him. Um, big fat Santa with big boobs. I don't think he's whipping him. That's his. Uh, remember the oh, banners are, on his. Those are his banners that talk and live. Yeah. Um. But it's super <laughs> weird. Yeah. He's got it's like Santa. an SMM fantasy with Santa. Yeah. Huh. So okay. it's kind of super weird. Well, that's neat. There's also one of him with like I guess severed elf heads, but he's oh, having yeah. the elves work for well, him. You gotta you gotta take those elves out. Uh, I think he's helping the homeless. I can't tell okay. what he's doing in that one. Yeah. Uh, he's this picking one, up a truck. Picking I guess. up a truck, and there's bad guys. Then there he is Santa? with the teddy bear, but I guess that's his comic down at the bottom. I think that's what that's supposed to be. Okay. There we go. Oh, boy. Yeah. So now we've got a big fat Santa in his underwear laying on the ground. He looks like he's been assaulted. Uh, he has a bottle of whiskey and a whiskey glass that's fallen over. And then Ultimate is putting on Santa's pants. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And, I don't know uh, what happened here. It, it's funny, too, because if, if you look, it's kind of odd. Um, <laughs> Did you notice that, too, Mike? Are we talking about the white stuff on Santa? Yeah. Or the shit on the floor? <laughs> Wait, is there shit on the floor? <laughs> oh, there is. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody's like, oh, it's supposed to be sweat. Um, mm, that's some awful... I opaque think, sweat. I think whoever drew this, and I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Oh, it was Callahan. Oh, okay. boy. It looks like. Um, I think Callahan threw in something there. It looks like Ultimate Warrior uh, has, sexually assaulted Santa. It does. It looks like he has relieved himself right on Santa's big fat butt. And so that is the, that's the. That's the whole thing. Arm. No, that was the Christmas. It was just pinups. That's oh, all the Christmas boy. thing was. No what story. What a special Christmas that was that year. So then we get issue number four, which is the last issue here. Mike, so this is like three and a half. Tell me if you notice anything different. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's drawn very poorly. Uh, well, I mean, I guess it's I not know. poorly. It's just, it's all it's black different. and white. It's all black and white. There is no color in the fourth issue but whatsoever. So squished. And it is a completely different art style. Yeah, it is. This is one of those people who wrote in. Yep. Uh, this is done by the, it's uh, Sharp Boys. Sharp Boys. Sure. Right? So everything's different. Well, they could get over themselves. They didn't bring their inflated yeah. ego. So for me, I could have read through this and Holy I kind of like. crap, this is hard to read. Yes. I could have read through it, and I like flipped through to try Wowzers. to follow it some, but um, like it was just too much for me. There's a scene uh, here where somehow he like goes through. There's so much detail; it's too much detail in some of it. Uh huh. I, I don't even know if that makes sense. Yeah, and that's no, what I mean. No, it, but there's something. It, it makes total sense. It's like it. It's like a. Um. You remember those, those, or you've seen some of those, uh, like keep on trucking comics and stuff yeah. from like the seventies, Yeah, you know, the big eyeball and all that stuff. And the, you know, just the, the amazing detail that's in these things. This is what this reminds me of. It's just, it's so friggin' detailed. So I'm trying to read, it is. And so I'm trying to read through this and follow it the best that I can and I know what's going on kind of in general that this is now 1997, I think. He is out of wrestling again. I he has been like, fired again for the third time for, from WWF. And yeah. this is before the WCW run. I bring that up because there's a quote in here where it goes, one more stop for, our, uh, where is this at? Oh, it goes, and I got to tell you, Warrior handed it to them on a silver platter. First he goes Oh, first he gouges Vince McMahon's eyes by giving him the F off, and now this. Oh, man. 
unbelievable. This has got to be sports entertainment's greatest hour. So I'm like, he's taking shots at Vince already. And I was like, oh yeah, he's not in with the company anymore. So he's getting stuff out. And there's a tag on the end of this where it just says next ep- uh, issue. And so they tease the next issue, but there's not one. But then there's this thing called Warrior's Wisdom. Wait, lose the insipid attitude shit for sense. Yeah. Shit for sense. It's It makes no sense. Like, I can't describe the story because I don't. Hey, Catch, did you snatch all the ephedrine canisters? Yeah. What is this? Like, it's like a Mad Max kind of thing or what? In a way. Huh. What was latent is now active. The physical begins to actuate. Millions of complex, intricate faculties answered by one act. Movement, each corresponding to another's call, pushing forth the greatest machine man has ever known, the human body, its potential unknown, its creator, oneself. Wow. And then, like Howard Stern's on TV down here. My goodness, folks. Um, I haven't been baffled by many of these things that you've brought to me, Zach. Yeah. But this is this is baffling. So I'm like, he's going after Vince, and then I get to the very end. Do you remember when This does feel like somebody just trying to drive you insane? I mean, this is like this is this is it this being, is if nutty. it were in color, it would it would help a lot. I think it's it being all in black and white. I guess. I don't know, but it's I don't know, man. Hello, biggin. So, but <laughs> at the very end. Yeah. Yeah, let's and I don't, I don't mean yeah, to rush I can't. you. No, 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 no. You're, you're very, very good. But, I, I just kind of, I'm getting lost in this So we get this to, thing. yeah, no, you're yeah, right, right here. At the very end. Okay. Warrior wisdom. Warrior wisdom. You see how hard that, that is to yeah. read? No, that's too so many words. It, it's super hard even on like the digital version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they put black font on gray uh-huh. and there's some on red and then red on white, which oh is so hard God. to read. And then white on, so like you can't read any of this. There is so much here. It is four pages. And I was like, what in the world? And I look, and you want to know what the title of it is? Huh. Callahan is a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says at the very top, Mike. Oh, it does say that. And so that. That's I want to give, I'm going to give some credit here because I found this on, I had to look for this, and it's on a something, I Google search, so let me pull it up. It's on the somethingawful.com, the forms from there. Somebody by the name of, and I want to get, I don't know if their name is Added Space. Uh, I think, yeah, Added Space. Wow. And I think he and his wife or girlfriend, he goes, thanks to Miss Space for helping me read this section that were nearly illegible, or illegible due to bad coloring. Mm-hmm. So do you want to know? And that's the thing, is it ends after that note, just the end, mm-hmm. number five ships in May, number mm-hmm. five never shipped. Basically, he goes, Callahan, this piece of shit, you heard me. Don't just take my word for it. Let me tell you the story. Okay. And all four pages is that story, Mike. Yeah. Here's what I can tell from it because I just could not read. Like some of it, it looks like it cut out and like there's some you can't put together. So you can't put together the whole thing. Okay. But he lays out like, hold on. I want to find just, I don't want to read the whole letter because we'd Mm. be here all day. Yeah, please don't. But let me find some of the, uh, I feel like it's one of those things that uh, if you read it out loud, it would drive us insane. Here he goes. Uh, So it's time someone took a stand and lanced this boil because he's talking about so-called experts are writing a lot about the problems in the comic industry, but Mm. few dare point the accusing finger. He's taken upon himself to do it. Oh, thank he God. says, I'm pointing the finger at irresponsible artists who claim attention deficit syndrome. We didn't call it attention deficit disorder at that time. Apparently we called mm. it attention deficit syndrome, syndrome. in 97 sure. uh, as an excuse to leave their work unfinished and flit from one publisher to flit. another. Any young buck can put out a book or two, but buck. only experience can show anyone has the endurance to uh, reliably produce. So he goes on and on. And he's like, it's up to me to set an example. And I offer up as a sacrifice one Jim Callahan. And then he just starts laying into him. Talks about how much they agreed to per page, his penciling deal, how they got done on three, and that he had some health problem that he told him about. And then that uh, he paid him his money up front for, like, he's putting it all in this letter. He paid him his money up front to uh, for issue four because he knew he was having a seizure, or a seizure, uh, a procedure. Can't talk now. Um, he talked about that. Like, well, this will do that to you. 
That's what I'm he saying. Was like, yeah. He, think... Warrior says that, you know, you told me about your health problems and I told mm-hmm. you, oh, you should probably have that fixed sooner rather than later, but you didn't listen to me. Then you finally it came to a time where you needed to have it fixed and I paid you ahead of time so you could have that, you know, procedure done. And then you still didn't give me a book. Oh, you'll give it to me this time. Oh, you'll give it to me that time. You never did it. He was like, you know, the state of California courts or whatever for child custody have called me because oh I gave you God. money to pay for that. He was like, How, I can't believe wow. that you'd be such a scumbag, like not to take care of your kids. What a guy. Dude, he is just lambasting them through this whole thing. Mm. So that's what I find. And it goes, uh, I'll end. I'll just read the last part of his yeah, letter, please. I guess, just to sum it up. Sure. Um. You may be asking me why I'm going on at such lengths about this. One word, responsibility. Take 20 minutes and go and listen to the new the news. The whole world's perception of right and wrong has become crazy. People like Callahan get sympathy and told about how hard life is. Chances are are his newborn again. Oh, that's a thing too. Sorry, I didn't include that. Oh. He also brings up the fact that uh, at one point in time, like your kids called me Uncle Warrior and my wife, Aunt Dana, and you had them, you know, they loved reading our books. Now they can't read my books because of the filth that's in there and stuff because you're crazy and you're born again. And he's like, I bet your born again friends are telling you I'm the Antichrist. It's okay to steal money from the Antichrist. Like he's doing stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, I was about to get to that line. Sorry. Yeah. The whole world's perception of right and wrong. Uh, chances are his newborn again friends have convinced him that I'm the Antichrist. Uh, it's not wrong to cheat and steal from the Antichrist, Jimmy. How evil I am Jimmy. telling. Yeah, so he calls him Jimmy. <laughs> how evil I am telling people to take control of their own lives instead of letting the church do it. Jim Callahan is the kind of person Mike Reniger of Fan Magazine, the guy who got bread shoved down his throat, <laughs> talked so vaguely about. Hey, Callahan, when I come for you, don't bother looking over your shoulder. I'll be looking for you right in the eyes. Irresponsibility is irresponsibility. No excuse. Tolerating it just allows the system to crumble. Ever wonder why more people aren't called out? It's because telling the truth takes courage. When you accuse someone, you put your own actions and credibility on the line. I'll stand by all my words and actions. That is how I live. Challenge me if you want. I am warrior and I am ultimately responsible. Presented by Ultimate Creations of Scottsdale, Arizona, Warrior Whereabouts. Call 1 900 288 WARR. 295 a minute, 18 plus. Touchtone only. Updated every 72 hours. If you are under 18, ask mom or dad for permission. So that is where this ends. <laughs> like, again, I could spend so much time and Yikes. there's a lot of time you can talk about just the craziness that wow. was the ultimate warrior. So you teased this with me about it being nuts, but I did not realize that it was this insane. Yeah. I mean, this is this is like I couldn't I couldn't finish it to tell you what it was about. No, this is literally a crazy person that that has been given a platform. But to what I did discover that was better to me yeah. Yeah. was the fact the underneath the story of it, of how he produces a comic book. Mm-hmm. People in the industry tell him it's too hard to read. He assaults the guy for doing that mm-hmm. apparently, or he wants with you to bread. with bread. Sure, and then it's like, oh, he's right. He tries to explain it. Super confusing. Still doesn't help. Uh-huh. Has to include the key, like in every yeah, issue. Yeah, that already yeah. should tell you it's bad. Yeah. By the third issue, is having problems with his colorist, <laughs> and looks takes an ad out in his own comic, which I guess you know that's the place to do it if you own it. I guess. Then finds a completely another you know artist to take over, and has a letter at the end of it, a four page letter blasting the previous one. Well, it's Sharp Boys. Yeah. It was just it was it was fun and funny to me, and it's just this so fantastic. weird. Yeah. I, I, and here's the thing, man. I I don't want to belittle like mental health issues, right? No. But, but you can clearly tell there is something wrong with this guy. It's well, and that's the thing too. Is uh, I think the best way to put it is in the comment that I've heard from Jim Cornette when he told the story on his podcast. I think I played it for you a little bit. As he talks about, they left the office or the office. They left the meeting with Warrior. Yeah, and he looked at them and was like, "Did you guys understand an effing thing he just said?" Yeah, and they go, "Yeah, that's just Warrior." Wow. But like the stories that were told, it's I've been watching a lot of like true crime stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And the the underlying issue with most of the true crime things is that they let um, mental health issues go unchecked. 
You know, that, that happens a lot in these things. And, um, this feels like one of those things. I, I don't know that this guy ever committed terrible acts, but he sure, sure feels like it because boy, when you, when you go from this first issue and you just start kind of thumbing through stuff, right? Well, he had nothing to do with the very right. First I get one, that. But. I get that. But again, you go from there, and then you go into a pretty impressive looking comic. You know, it feels kind of like Spawnish yeah. or something to it, right? I mean, these are the same kind of guys here producing this stuff. And then you get into some of the black and white with the weird story. Now you've started getting into more of the um, just uh, weird. Well, it's not, it, it's the, it's again, he's got like this manifesto. I, that's the only way I know to describe it. It's a manifesto that's played out as a comic book, basically. Um, and I, I think the guy probably believed all these things. Oh no, for sure. Wow. How many times you got to get hit in the head? Wow. Woof. Okay. Well, good job. Uh, if you want to, if you're interested. Sorry about your insanity. Just- Huh? <laughs> Sorry about your coming insanity. Uh, that's fine. Sure. Uh, if I mean, it's it's definitely. I will tell you, um, I am a huge wrestling fan, uh, and it's not in a way of like. Well, I'll say like I, I can enjoy and I appreciate, and I've told Mike this before. I can enjoy and appreciate like really or uh, just good matches. Um, like I enjoy two people putting on and sure. just what they're able to accomplish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not one of those, like, I know people want to be the whole, like, oh, you know, it's, you know, predetermined. All, that's right. fine. Whatever. Um, I it's take, theater. Exactly. Yeah. It's live. It's close to live theater. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a very, it's yeah. live physical theater. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I enjoy what they do and I think it takes talent. Uh, sure. and I've always just been more to me cause it's very much like, um, just these larger than life people. And I've mm-hmm. always gravitated mm-hmm. to the behind the scenes things. Yeah. So like how yeah. you have like so many type a personalities in like one place. Like how many, how do you have, like you hear all these crazy stories about things they did, like the the ways they act and stuff like that. So if you Mm -hmm. ever want to go down a rabbit hole and just see some more crazy, ultimate warrior is a great place to start. Yeah. Um, he's, he might not be the worst, but, um, he, uh, who would you say is the worst? Like the worst. How so? I don't know. I'll tell you like, that's what I'm saying. I mean, like who's, who's here's, here's what I'll tell you. The worst you've heard of. Like personality wise, that kind of thing. Action. He was, uh, I've heard a lot of people like he really is. Close, was one of the right? toughest. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. he, nobody liked working with him. Yeah. Um, it, nobody, not even just like wrestling with him. Like I heard mean Gene, uh, Oakland talk about how, uh, like doing promos and stuff with him. Like, yeah, you never understood what he said. Like yeah. it was just so hard. Yeah. Um, you, you, you tend to forget that these are real people. Yeah. But they're like, here's, but it's like Hulk Hogan's up there too. Yeah. Because I don't imagine that's the thing. Uh, there is, I don't think there is and I I don't want to get sued. So I don't want to say it like that. Mm. Um, how can I say it? You know, one of the things I think it could, it could be argued by some people maybe that there could or couldn't maybe be a bigger liar out there than Terry Balea, a.k.a. Hulk Hogan. Oh, really? Yeah. I just... Well, I think through his actions, we've seen a lot of that. Yeah. Well, I just <laughs> remember, like, watching, like... You remember MTV Cribs? Mm-hmm. Like, I remember they did an episode with him, and, like, they go through, and he's showing stuff off, and he's like, oh, these are the boots that I wore during WrestleMania right. three when I sli- slammed Andre the Giant. I was the first person to slam Andre the Giant. It's but also he- sad, uh, you know, a couple of days later, man... Uh, Passed away after that too. A couple things wrong with that story. Yeah. First of all, Hulk Hogan was not. Uh, if Andre, like Andre, had let other people slam him, obviously right. he had to be comfortable with you, and it needed to sure. work for what they were doing. Sure, but sure. he had done it before. Right. I'm pretty sure Big John studded me and slammed him. Before. Yeah. Um, I know way too much about this. So. <laughs> uh, but then also, um, WrestleMania three happened in 1988, mm-hmm. 87. Okay. 87 happened in 1987. Uh, Andre the Giant died in 1991. Mm. So uh, he's off by about four years. Sure. And it's just things like that all the time. Of just well, it's retelling. the next day to him. Yeah. It's, you know, the story about um, how he was supposed to be the uh, drummer or was a guitar player in Metallica. Like he, Hulk he Hogan? Always, yeah. Dude, there's like. Uh, there's he told story. that story? Yeah. There's wow. a lot of crap like that out there. 
Yikes. It's huh. it's hilarious. It's All it's right. entertaining. Hold but uh, uh we're not going to dive into wrestling next week. I was trying to uh <laughs> we're gonna hey, say this was far this was great though, by the way. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it was out there, I know. And we gotta and, we gotta uh, peek at your uh your your uh obsession uh, with wrestling know. yeah it is it's that in sport like there's things in life that uh i just have always loved and always dove in usually when i love something i dive in head first and comic books were always something like that wrestling was always something like that sports in yeah. general was always something like that yeah so always that kind of guy and uh yeah there's just stuff that you just end up like hanging on to and storing that you don't realize until like you start talking, you're like, blah, 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 and you start spinning it all out. And you're like, man, all right. I really, uh, I, I do know more about it than I think I'm trying to look at the schedule because we talked about it a little bit last week, Mike, mm-hmm. uh, we have a one year anniversary coming up and it's, it's going that to just be floors me by the way. That's I know just, that's crazy. So our current, our current, uh, issue yeah. episode, if you're listening to it right now, it uh it is the week of June sixth. Yeah. Um, but our first show debuted on June fourteenth of twenty twenty one. Wow. So how about we will do I'll I'll do a one year special in a way. Yeah. And we'll do it the week so next week we'll do a one year special. Okay. And we'll go back to a superhero that um people know. Um uh, it's my favorite superhero, um, which is Batman. But mm. we're gonna focus on a story from the eighties. That has been described to some as uh, not brick bat, not brick bat. Okay. No, that was seven 11. Sure. Uh, which go back and listen to seven 11. Great episode. That was fun. <laughs> brick bat. Uh, we are going to get back to some more of those ridiculous, yeah, sure, sure. uh, public domain characters. We just need to kind of dabble out a little bit, but there's a book. It was kind of a, a graphic novel, a, a larger, a prestige format kind mm, of, yeah. of a story told in four parts called Batman, the cult in uh, 88. Uh, some people describe it at, they love it. It's mm-hmm. one of the like under the radar, like really good books. Some people call it a very weird kind of strange book. Right. Um, it introduces uh, Deacon Blackstone, which is a character that I know has appeared in the uh, Arkham video game. So mm-hmm. I think for our anniversary, um, unless uh, we just start doing, cause there's three versions. Remember there's three iterations of black condor, mm. unless we did the first one, I focus on the middle <laughs> black condor. Do we want to do, you know what? It, it, it didn't happen long. I think I'll throw that in too. Okay. Just, it feels right. like for each anniversary special, we'll also cover another version of black condor. Super so I'll do the second packed episode. I'll do the, so next week we got Batman cult uh-huh. and, uh, or, or maybe I'll even do it the week after, but we'll tease it as part yeah. of the one year anniversary. Sure. We'll also give you, uh, another look at black condor. Maybe then Wonderful. Too. so that's what you can expect coming up. As always, we appreciate you listening. <laughs> Find us on Instagram, bro, foe, hero, or email us, bros, foes, and heroes at gmail.com. Also, uh, make sure to check out Rogue Media Network as well, the great family of podcasts that I get to be a part of, yeah. that we all are a part of, and uh, tons of great stuff out there to listen, uh, aside from us, too. So make sure to check that out, too. Um, Mike, anything you'd like to... Man, I I just want to as we approach this one year anniversary, I just I just want to thank you again for bringing this concept and for all the great research you do. Well, thank you. I mean, seriously, I'm, I mean, I'm that's not a joke. If, if anything, uh, to the you know twelve of you that are listening, we appreciate it. <laughs> and, more than and, if, if anything, okay, the fourteen 13, of you that are yeah. oh. Ah, I was close. Yeah, you overshot. I did. Um, but if anything, like it helped, uh, it's something I look forward to every yeah. week of just no, being able to sit here super fun. and talk to Mike. Uh, yeah, we have, we have comics. We have something to talk about, yeah, it, but he sure. usually drives every, you know, off to everything <laughs> else, but we have fun doing it. So as always appreciate you and uh, look forward to many, many more uh, weird and crazy stuff in the future here as well. But until next time, stay safe, everybody. You got it gone. Get folked. Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. <laughs>